Hello everybody. In this video we're going to be going over section 13.1, Chemical Equilibria. For our learning objectives we're going to describe the nature of equilibrium systems and we're going to explain the dynamic nature of chemical equilibrium. So when we first started studying reactions it was really convenient for us to talk about reactions that go completely from the reactants to the products. But this is really an oversimplification of what typically is going to happen. We don't have a situation where all the reactants get consumed and produce products. In actuality, most reactions are reversible, at least to some extent. All right. And that means that it's uh, possible for reactants to turn into products and for products to turn into reactants. And it really depends on where you start with this. Okay, if I mix together some reactants, I'm going to produce products. If I add products into there with no reactants, I'm going to see the reverse reaction take place. So we can now think about this in the context of rates, because um, we have that language there. If we have a reversible reaction, there is a rate that goes from the reactants to the products, and a rate that's going to describe the conversion from the products to the reactants. When our forward rate is larger, faster than our reverse rate, we're going to see the reaction proceed from the reactants towards the products. When our reverse rate is larger, faster than our forward rate, we're going to see product, the reaction proceed from the products toward the reactants. What's going to happen as the reaction proceeds in all cases is that eventually these two rates become equal to one another. Okay, the forward rate is the same as the reverse rate. And that is what we call our dynamic equilibrium. All right. Even though we still always will have conversion between the reactants and the products, they're happening at the same speed and therefore the net amount of reactants and the net amount of products remains the same. I kind of like to think about this as if it was like a warehouse. Imagine I have a warehouse full of boxes. So long as I'm removing boxes just as fast as I'm bringing boxes in, the net number of boxes inside the warehouse stays the same. And the same is true in this case here. What we don't know from this model alone, and we'll see how we can figure this out in a little bit, is the relative concentrations of the reactants and products that we're going to see at equilibrium. All right. This equilibrium point could lie uh, far to the right, where we have a lot of products and very few reactants. It could lie far to the left, where we had a lot of reactants and very few products. Or it could be somewhere in the middle where we both have an appreciable amount of reactants and products. That's going to depend on the specific system that we're studying. If we look at this graphically with an example here where I have N2O4 breaking down into uh, nitrous oxide here, what's going to happen at the beginning is I'm going to have a lot of my reactants. Imagine I just charged a cylinder with uh, just the N2O4 here, okay? Uh, and then rapidly, it's going to start to decompose. And it's going to rapidly produce that NO2. That's going to slow down, as indicated by these curves, until eventually they reach some stable concentration. At that point, those two concentrations won't change, and we've achieved equilibrium. If we look, if we were to graph their rates, we would see that that same point at which those concentrations are steady state is the same point at which these two rates have converged into the same rate. It's true for physical equilibrium as well. And we've already seen an example of this when we were talking about vapor pressure. We had an example where we looked at bromine liquid turning into gas. And we saw that at some point, the rate at which bromine molecules were leaving the liquid phase and moving into the gas phase was the same as the rate as we, uh, of uh, bromine molecules moving out of the gas phase and into the liquid phase. 
In that sort of a situation, that dynamic equilibrium means that we have roughly the same number of molecules in the liquid phase as we do in the gas phase, and we reach that uh, vapor pressure that we expect it to have um, inside of a closed container.